Hey everybody, this is our video solution to problem one from Super Quiz 3. This is from our Fall 2021 Math 302 class. Math 302 is Modern Algebra here at Cal State Fullerton. And this first problem, we are looking at uh, two Gaussian integers. So remember that the Gaussian integers, all right, that's the ring ZI. So all things of the form A plus BI, where A and B are integers. And what we would like to do is, given these two Gaussian integers, Z and W, we would like to first apply the division algorithm to these things. So remember, when we apply the division algorithm, we're trying to find Gaussian integers Q and R such that Z is equal to Q times W plus R. So here Q and R should be Gaussian integers. And furthermore, we also want that zero uh, should be less than or equal to the norm of R, which, okay, what was the norm of a Gaussian integer? So the norm of a Gaussian integer is just the sum of the squares of the coefficients. Okay, well, this is actually not all that interesting because you can see a norm is a sum of squares. So it will automatically be greater than or equal to zero. So that's not the interesting part. But we also want that the norm should be less than the norm of w. Okay, so when we say uh, that we're going to apply the division algorithm, we mean we ultimately want to find this q and this r, and they need to satisfy that they're Gaussian integers, and that the norm of r is smaller than the norm of w. All right, now we have our uh, specific way of applying the division algorithm for Gaussian integers, and that comes down to taking the the two Gaussian integers and dividing them. And the way we'll do this division is by multiplying by the reciprocal, or the reciprocal, the complex conjugate, excuse me, of two minus three i. So we're gonna to multiply top and bottom by two plus three i. Now the bottom is easy. We'll always just get the norm of the original denominator. So I just take two squared plus three squared, which is 13. In the numerator, let's see, we're going to get 15 times 2 is 30. Uh, then we're going to get minus 7 times 3, so that's 21. And then let's see, we're going to get 15 times 3 is 45, and 7 times 2 is 14 copies of i. So all I'm doing is distributing, right? 15 times 3i, 7i by 2i, uh, by 2 is giving me this, this bit here. And if I uh, do my little arithmetic correctly, let's see, this is going to be a 9 over 13 plus a 59 over 13 times i. Okay, so once I have done this, this is my division. Uh, of course, I'm not getting a Gaussian integer here. So just as a parenthetical, this implies that w, right, which is our 2 minus 3i, does not divide z, which is 15 plus 7i. Right? If you had divided, uh, if, if W had divided Z, then this would end up being a Gaussian integer. Okay, so in order now to use this to find our quotient Q, we want to round this to a Gaussian integer. And, and there's actually uh, four Gaussian integers that we could reasonably round this to. So if I draw here the complex plane, then, okay, on here on the real axis, I have a 1. On the complex axis, I have an i. Uh, then over here, I have 1 plus i. And then, of course, over here is 0. Now, I know that this 59 over 13, I can think of this here as, well, let's see, 13 goes into 59 four times. So this is 4. And let's see, that would be 7 over 13. Okay, so uh, as far as rounding goes, I'm not worried about this 4 for the moment. I'm just worried about the 7 thirteenths. And so if I think about the 9 thirteenths and a 7 thirteenths I, again, forgetting about the 4, then my 9 thirteenths, maybe that goes here, and my 7 thirteenths I, that can go here, and I would get some point. And so all I have to do now is round this to one of these four corners of the box. Okay, so this box, right, the corners of it are Gaussian integers. 
And uh, so one might reasonably say, well, uh, you know, let's just choose the one where it's closest to. And, and that here shouldn't be so hard to do, right? It looks like maybe uh, going to the one plus I would be the closest one. But uh, you could also ask, well, could I go to any of the other ones? And as long as they are within one, okay, in, in norm, then it's okay. So how far away is, well, let's see, what's the furthest one away? Well, let's see, if I go this direction, I have to go 9 thirteenths. If I go to the right, I only have to go 4 thirteenths. So the longer way would be to the left. And then if I go down, that would be down 7 thirteenths. If I go up, that's only 6 thirteenths. So the one which is furthest away would actually be this zero here. All right. Well, so let's see how far away zero is from this 9 over 13 plus 7 over 13i. So the height here is going to be 7 over 13. The width is going to be 9 over 13. And so by the Pythagorean theorem, I know this distance will be 9 over 13 quantity squared plus 7 over 13 quantity squared. And let's see, 9 squared is 81, 7 squared is 49. 81 and 49 is 130. So this will be the square root of 130 over 169. 169 is 13 squared. And this is definitely less than 1. So that's the furthest we'd ever have to go, and it's already less than 1. So actually, if we drew a circle of radius 1 around this dot, all four of these dots are going to be inside that circle. So no matter which direction we choose right, to round this to, so rounding choices... would be, okay, so 9 thirteenths, if we went the worst case, right, 9 13 goes down to 0, okay, and if we round the 7 thirteenths to 0 as well, then this would just be the, the 4, right, the 4 that we weren't thinking about. So I could go to 4i, okay, that would be one rounding choice. Um, I could also have made this 9 thirteenths go up to 1. I could also have rounded this to 5 instead of to 4. And of course, I could also round both of them up. And all of these choices, because they're all within one of this dot, they are all legitimate. So every one of these is a potential for Q. Okay, so these are, are all legitimate choices for Q. Okay, now this is very different from the division algorithm with the integers where we have a unique Q, right? There's just one quotient that we choose. But here, uh, for Gaussian integers, we're actually going to have up to four different legitimate choices. So I'm not going to go through uh, the remainder that you would get in all four cases, uh, but let's maybe go through a couple of them. So let's, uh, let's try, I don't know, how about we'll do this 4i, and then we'll do the last one, the 1 plus 5i. So if we choose the 0 plus 4i, then I, if I want to get the remainder, then what I'm going to do is go back up here and say, well, let's see. My z is supposed to be qw plus r. So let me multiply q by w and see what I'm missing. And whatever I'm missing, that's going to be my r. So my w is 2 minus 3i. Remember that from up here. So let's just copy it. And so q times w is going to be 4i by 2 minus 3i which is, let's see, 4i by minus 3 is going to be positive 12, and then 4i by 2 is going to be plus 8i. Okay, but now z, z was 15 plus 7i. So we're missing some things. What are we missing? So z is going to equal q times w plus, okay, so we have 12, but we want 15, so we need to add 3. And we have 8i, but we want 7i, so we need to subtract an i. Okay, so this is going to be our r. And let's double check the condition, right? We need that the norm of r is less than the norm of w. All right, that's what we need to check. Well, the norm of r here is 3 squared plus 1 squared. That's 10. And the norm of w is 2 squared plus 3 squared, which is 13. All right, so this checks out. 
So one of our options is going to be that 15 plus 7i is equal to 4i times 2 minus 3i plus 3 minus i. That could be our division algorithm. All right, now let's try the other one, 1 plus 5i. So if I have q is equal to 1 plus 5i, I still have w is equal to 2 minus 3i. Then q times w is going to equal, let's see, 1 times 2 is 2. And then 5i times minus 3i will be plus 15. Then 1 times negative 3i, so we'll have a negative 3 and 5 times 2 is 10 i. So this is 17 plus 7i. Okay, so our z, which remember again is supposed to be 15 plus 7i, will be qw plus what? Okay, qw has a 17. We just want a 15, so we're going to need a negative 2. We also have a 7i. And, ooh, that's exactly what we wanted. So I don't need anything else. So my r in this case is just going to be negative 2. Okay, and again, we can check. The norm of negative 2 is at less than the norm of w. Well, we already know the norm of w is 13, and the norm of negative 2 is just negative 2 squared, which is 4. Yeah, 4 is less than 13. Awesome. Okay, so that means that we could also write 15 plus 7i as equal to, uh, let's see, our q here is 1 plus 5i times 2 minus 3i minus 2, right? Or if you prefer, plus negative 2. Okay, so we found two different ways of using the division algorithm, and of course, there's going to be two other ways if we had started with our q equaling 1 plus 4i or equal to 5i. All right, now there's a second part to this problem. After you've applied the division algorithm, you're supposed to use the Euclidean algorithm to show that z and w are relatively prime. So we're going to pick one of these to go with. And um, well, since the more, com let's use the more complicated looking one, right? So we'll use this one as the first step in our Euclidean algorithm. So we'll copy this down. So this is now in part B. We have 15 plus 7i is equal to 4i times 2 minus 3i plus 3 minus i, right? I'd actually much rather be using uh, this minus 2 as a remainder because it's going to make things easier. But hey, let's, let's take like a worst case scenario, right? So in the next step of the Euclidean algorithm, I have to slide these over. So I now have 2 minus 3i equals, it'll be something times 3 minus i, plus again a something, right? So I need to apply the division algorithm again. All right, so let's do that over here. So I'm dividing 2 minus 3i by 3 minus i. So once again, I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal. Uh, I keep saying reciprocal by the complex conjugate. And let's see, in the denominator, it's easy. We just get the norm, which we saw was 10. And in the numerator, let's see, we get 2 times 3 is 6. Then negative 3i times i, that's going to be plus 3. Then we're going to have 2 times i, so there's a 2, and a negative 3i times 3, so that'll be a minus 9, all times i. And if we simplify, we get 9 over 10 minus 7 over 10i. All right, once again, I have some options which way I want to round this. 9 tenths, that's pretty close to 1. That, that feels like a pretty good thing to round it to. Uh, negative 7 tenths, I could round it down to 0 or up, uh, or to, say, down to 0, up to 0, or down to negative 1. It's closer to the negative 1, so why don't we use the close one? So we're going to round 9 over 10 minus 7 over 10i to 1 minus i. Okay, so this is going to be my new q, right? This 1 minus i. And so let's see what happens. So if we did 3 minus i times 1 minus i, we would get, okay, 3 times 1 is 3. Minus i times minus i is minus 1. Then 3 times negative i gives me a negative 3i, and negative i times 1 gives me another negative 1i. And so I get 2 minus 4i. Now I don't want 2 minus 4i, I actually want 
2 minus 3i. So let's write this in here and see what we're missing. So we're going to have 1 minus i. And when I multiply, I get 2 minus 4i. Now the 2s, those line up. That's okay. But I'm supposed to have minus 3i, and I have minus 4i. So I'm going to have to add an i. Okay. And we can check here that uh, the remainder term i, so there's our norm of i, is supposed to be less than the norm of this 3 minus i. Of course, we know the norm of 3 minus i is 10. The norm of i is just 1 squared, or 1. Okay, so 1 is less than 10. Yep, this absolutely works. All right, now we could naively keep going. Okay, how would we naively keep going? We're going to shift again. We say something times i plus something. What I claim, though, is that this something is going to have to be a 0 because i is a unit. All right? We actually got to a unit, so we should stop. But let's pretend we didn't know that. Right? We'll keep going, and we'll, we'll do the division. Right? We say, okay, 3 minus uh, i divided by i. We'll multiply by the complex conjugate. We got it right that time. And on the bottom, I just get the norm, which is 1. And on the top, I get, let's see, uh, negative i times negative i is going to be negative 1. And 3 times negative i is going to be minus 3i. And so this is negative 1 minus 3i, which is itself a Gaussian integer, which tells you that i actually divides 3 minus i. There's no remainder. All right? So the quotient is negative 1 minus 3i, and then the remainder is 0. And so the way the Euclidean algorithm works, of course, we know we go to the last non-zero remainder, and that will be a greatest common divisor. And this greatest common divisor, right, so i is a greatest common divisor of 15 plus 7i and 2 minus 3i. But i is a unit, right? i is a unit, and that's what we're looking for. If we're trying to prove that two things are relatively prime, we need their greatest common divisor to be a unit. So, and so 15 plus 7i and 2 minus 3i are relatively prime. Okay. So don't get fooled into thinking relatively prime means the GCD has to be a 1. Right? 1 is a greatest common divisor, that's true, but i is also a greatest common divisor. All right? As would negative i be a greatest common divisor, add would negative 1 be a greatest common divisor. Right? In fact, in this case, all of the units will be a greatest common divisor. All right, everybody. Well, we will see you next time for problem 2.